Ah, there we go. All right. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, welcome. I'm here today to uh, spread the world the word about our new um, AI overlords. Um, but on a serious note, I'm uh, Dan, also known as, as uh, Zero Lab. I work for Torchbox, and you may have seen me in Slack or in GitHub issues. So, uh, what do I actually want to talk about? Uh, when we talk Wagtail AI, it's two packages, uh, so the Wagtail AI and Wagtail Vector Index. Um, they were started by my co colleague, uh, Tom Usher, who, um, you know, wanted to play and had a side project, and we've since adapted that, uh, adopted that, and brought in a number of uh, enhancements and iterations, and we kind of looked at how might we use them in uh, real-world uh, scenarios, and, um, yeah, what, what would the, be a sensible way to use them? So rather than uh, jump in the... Um, LLM, you know, an AI craze. Uh, we wanted to, to, to just look at practical solutions. Um, also, I want to note that these are all optional, so they're, they're not bundled into Wagtail. Don't, don't worry about that. So, Wagtail AI, it's a package aimed uh, at editors or anyone that has access to the Wagtail admin, and it's uh, intended to kind of enhance the the experience and uh, the Wagtail uh, interface. It uses the uh, LLM uh, package, so that's Simon Willison's uh, Simon Willison, uh, known in the Django world, and it allows us to support multiple um, multiple. LLMs, so OpenAI or Claude or even Olama. Um, it provides configurable uh, prompts from uh, the Wagtail admin, and uh, more recently, it supports alt text generation. And that last bit is not new. So Martin, put, I think it's somewhere here, um, had a, a, a package that did this um, for some time uh, using Azure. Uh, Cognition and AWS and, and uh, Google Vision, but we wanted to, to bring that into a, a unified experience. So, quick demo. I'm, I didn't want to uh, risk it, so I, I uh, recorded a, a screencast. So, this is me adding a new prompt, uh, saying, "Well, translate to uh, to Dutch." Um, there, you also see two others that come come with it. Uh, here, I have a page with some. Uh, some errors, so I, I'm asking it to correct those and then uh, translating that to uh, to Dutch. Oh, and it didn't stop. So it kind of does that. Um, that uses OpenAI, but uh, you can, uh, because, because of the LLM uh, package, you can also use a, a local LLM so you don't send your data anywhere. Um, this other uh, demo is just generating an, an alt uh, alt uh, text from from uh, from an image. Currently, it's uh, supporting just the Open AI, open AI uh, Vision uh, API, uh, but you can uh, you can build your own um, your prov provider, um, so you can integrate with other services. Um, the next one it's uh, Wagtail Vector Index. And that is aimed more at developers to help them build uh, richer sites or richer interactions. So um, what, what are some of the use cases for that? So uh, one of them is natural uh, language search, uh, sim similarity search, or content recommendations. So first off, um, a, a note on vector indexes. So for, for those of you who don't know, um, this whole thing is really, um, so vector, you, know, the, you may have heard embeddings, basically they're numerical uh, representations of the, of the, of the content um, or, well, or of the input. So that might be text, images. Um, so it tries to capture the semantics or the characteristics of the input in, in, in a numerical form. And then there are specialized databases 
that store these uh, kind of these clusters of numbers and they use different algorithms to basically uh, group similar things together so that's the, you do you, you can uh, you can retrieve them more efficiently and then you know the the further the, away they are uh, the less common they they um, those, those things are um, so the way we went with it and it's still kind of we're coming to to uh, to an API um, that would make sense for most people is that we went uh, we sort of copied the Wagtail search index uh, design where you uh, have a mix in and then you define some field, fields. It supports uh, asynchronous operations. So we, it started with the LLM package, but we've integrated the light LLM package to, to support that. And that's useful if you want to do streaming responses and, and kind of chat-like interfaces. Um, and it comes with pluggable providers. Um, so NumPy, PG Vector, Quadrant, and Weave 8 um, And these are basically either services or sort of specialized databases that, that know what to do with, uh, with those numbers. And this is a kind of a quick example how you might implement it. So you, uh, you have a mix in, you add it to your uh, page model, and then you define which fields to be considered for, for, that, for, for the embedding. So, so transformed into these numerical representations. Uh, and then the vector index itself um, has uh, these three public uh, interfaces or uh, things that it can do. And that's a query, a search, or similarity. So query will take the string, uh, convert that into an embedding, find similar content from your from your uh, uh, database or your vector index, then pass that to an, an LLM uh, as context, and then will, it will give you a response. Um, search uses uh, natural language processing to purely look what you have uh, look up what you have in uh, your index and then uh, the similarity one you give it an object and it will try to find you know the closest i think five uh, but that's configurable so the closest uh, objects uh, based on uh, magic <laughs> <coughs> and so um like this is a uh, like a practical application, so we built a sort of chat with uh, with the internet. Um, so that's our internet a, a torch box. So you just ask questions, it will find the relevant documents, and then um, it uses uh, an LLM to just compile the the data. Um, so a few considerations when using well any LLM really. Um, so cost, if you're using some, some service like OpenAI or um, Claude um, or you know, Google's Gemini and so on, there's some cost associated with, with using the API. And you know, it might be small, but if you, especially if you open that to the public, it will, it will ramp up. And if you do so, then you probably want to consider some kind of proxying service so it doesn't cost you an arm and a leg. Prompt injection, it's, it's always, you know, that's the big thing, especially with the LLMs and people trying to find creative ways uh, to, you know, for, to, to let the LLM kind of hallucinate or, or uh, kind of spew or, or reveal information it's not supposed to, to, to do. So you kind of want to be careful. And then if you want to do streaming interfaces, you definitely need an, a, a synchronous server. And you want connection pooling, and that's coming to Django 5.1. So um, basically, you don't want to be making lots of requests and, and, and kind of saturating your, your database. Of course, you could use other, you know, if you're not using it in, in a Django uh, and Wagtail context, that may not be such, such a problem. Um, so quickly about the roadmap, so our plan is to Further enhance uh, Wagtail AI, so the, the user-facing or editorial-facing uh, experience. Maybe look at multiple responses, uh, a more seamless editorial um, 
process where uh, perhaps it looks at the whole page as, uh, at the whole page rather than uh, uh, you know one single field and I put there insert your use case here because we'd like to, to hear you know real uh, user needs and try to see how we can do that holistically. And for uh, Wagtail Vector Index, it's, it's usable right now, so we have, we're, we're, we're using it in, in, well, you'd say production, but it's uh, internal. Um, so we're moving towards a stable release, so a stable um, uh, API. Um, we want to add more out-of-the-box providers, so you can use it with, you name it. Um, and then kind of look at uh, generally like the performance and uh, maybe considerations for things like PG vector. Um, yeah, and those are the uh, the URLs. Um, have a play. Let us know what you think.